Uh, it is a very basic and simple philosophy to understand that um, as I was explaining the four motivation of life is Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. It's also called the aim or the goal of uh, life. So um, basically what is life without a purpose, right? Everyone who is uh, zestful uh, to live life and who respects life as it is uh, knows that you know it needs to have a purpose okay life without a purpose is nothing so purush artha purush is your the source of the universe the soul of the universe and artha is basically the purpose okay so artha in hindi literally me, uh, it means the meaning okay artha means meaning so what is the purpose of life now when we talk about the second uh, motivation that is artha uh, this means uh, about the economic uh, freedom or uh, you know uh, having to do with uh, your economic independence or for security uh, whatever uh, work you do it is basically to secure yourself uh, whether it is for your health or uh, you know uh, buying a house or um, uh, you know having a bank balance so uh, now again as I said yesterday that uh, if you compare the earlier times where um, people were very simple in their lifestyle in their living when we did not have internet we did not have so much of variety on television we did not have so much of media exposure we did not have the world so small where we can get access to any part of uh, the world in just a click uh, which we have today on the smartphone so we have a lot of exposure of media in today's time and the more we get to know the more it kind of creates a lot of uh, uh, insecurity uh, and um, one also lives with strong faith I'm not saying that everybody is very insecure but it creates a lot of doubts and constant chaos and constant uh, you know fluctuation in the mind where mind is not steady and very distractive so when the mind is very distracted it cannot stay focused on its goal it does not focus on the right motivation what one is supposed to do jisko hum hindi mein kehte hain jana tha japan pahunch gaye chin china to bilkul mat jana aaj ke date mein theek hai waise bhi abhi china ke products ban ho rahe hain sorry i am taking it towards a little humor but uh, what i am trying to say is basically uh, when we are headed to do something uh, there are so many distractions coming in between that we get easily swayed uh, off and we get influenced by so many uh, other um, factors that entice us and uh, we forget what we were supposed to do so the classic example is being glued on the smartphone and just going on scrolling without a purpose uh, and forgetting what is the priority that we need to do. So Artha basically was meant for economic freedom or economic security. That's the motivation. But then as the civilization grew, as the society grew, uh, Artha, you know, when does it actually cross the line of need to greed? We don't really come to know because you know, human wants are unlimited. It keeps asking again and again. Uh, seldom do we uh, practice to, uh, you know, practice contentment, which is one of the uh, very important attribute mentioned in Ashtam Yoga in the second uh, step that's Niyamas, uh, where after uh, Shaucha, the first uh, principle of Niyam. Uh, second one is Santosha, that's contentment, which is to be uh, satisfied, not just satisfied, but contented to be what we have in the present. So, uh, if we practice that, life is at peace and wherever you are supposed to uh, reach uh, in whichever time, you will reach ultimately. Uh, you don't have to put any effort for that. So, uh, uh, 
अर्थ बेसिकली यू नो द मोटिवेशन ऑफ अर्थ इज लिटल एज आई सेड दैट वेन इट चेंजेस फ्रॉम नीड टू ग्रीन वन डज नॉट कम टू नो इफ यू कीप फोकसिंग ऑन फाइनेंस एंड मनी देर इज नो एंड टू इट सो आई एम नॉट द वन टू decide or to tell anyone that it is right motivation or wrong motivation but to each its own one has to uh, decide on its own where to put a stop and how much uh, to do and how to stay at peace with oneself and to be contented you don't have to read several books to find peace you just have to go within yourself and ask yourself how much do we need not want how much do we need to be happy and peaceful in life and the answer will be pretty evident and clear next motivation is calm that is pleasure or um, again uh, as i said uh, yesterday that it is not just uh, sensual pleasures it is pleasure of any sort or any kind of work or activity that you do and you try to derive pleasure out of it that is the motivation of karma and uh, as you uh, if i don't know how many of you know about abraham maslow he was one of the psychologist and uh, he wrote about his hierarchy of uh, motivational needs okay his uh, it's very famous work uh, hierarchy of needs uh, the very bottom talks about the physiological needs which is food shelter uh, and uh, you know clothing uh, all this is very basic he also includes um, i think um, am i silent okay um, he also includes the biological needs like the reproductive needs in the physiological aspect then second one uh, above physiological are uh, the safety needs where uh, you uh, the you know you talk about the uh, sense of security in terms of health in terms of uh, you know kind of investment or house or you know uh, property etc then he talks about the love and belonging needs having a family intimacy friendship uh, you know uh, sense of connection uh, with someone and stability in that then uh, above that comes um, after uh, that is i think self esteem needs uh, beyond love and long needs where it is uh, about uh, some sort of recognition as to who you are what you have achieved the purpose etc etc and then the last one uh, talks about the self actualization needs where you reach uh to a limit which is beyond what you do on a day to day basis and you know try to explore who you truly are and what you are uh and, you know you surprise yourself you you are yet to discover some uh some such mysterious truths of yourself so uh, why am, am i talking about this is basically um Abraham Maslow was a modern day psychologist who uh talks about these needs now these are very um you know selective needs uh, it one can do without uh marriage and sex in today's time you see a lot of people who are single and uh, a lot of people who are divorced who are uh, have uh, broken families and are still living and thriving in life so uh, not everything has per what abraham maslow has mentioned in his hierarchy of needs that the world or the society is functioning in that manner so again karma uh, that's pleasure or uh, you know that kind of motivation is temporary because if you uh, keep uh, dwelling between uh pleasure and pain because if you try to seek pleasure you will also have to experience pain these are dualities of life 
you cannot uh, choose only one thing that i want day i do not want night i want good i do not want bad i want right i do not want wrong you have to take both it's duality of life if you are experiencing one phenomena you have to experience its opposite phenomena as well you have to be prepared so uh, that therefore uh, if you continue to work with for the uh, with the motivation of pleasure it is going to cause pain and you're going to keep swinging uh, and dwelling between both uh, throughout so if you have to break the chain what do you have to do you have to focus simply on the karma do the karma for the sake of doing it with the respect of doing the action that there is a we have been born and the work has to be done so do the work don't put logic don't put so much of uh, meaning behind it don't uh, uh, be so cognitive about every work that only when i get some sort of benefit out of this work will i do this so it is always associated with some sort of greed if i get this i will do this if i don't get this i will not do it so it disturbs your mind it kind of uh, kind of uh, brings more aggression more anger and that gives you negative reinforcement it pulls you back so again mind control is in our hands so instead of negatively reinforcing yourself uh, make sure you bring clarity try to empty your um, thoughts and just uh, you know clear your mind and just think about the fact you are all alone in this world and here you are thriving all by yourself for your life and if you have to live life beautifully you have to take charge you have to take responsibility in your own hands and if you enjoy simply the action at any present moment of time be in the present you can simply be happy and peaceful with yourself you don't have to do a lot of fancy things you don't have to go to vipassana you don't have to do a lot of uh, fancy poses of yoga or you know 8 hours and 10 hours of meditation your meditation is way of life meditation is a state of mind so whatever action you are doing and you seek happiness in the action during the process in itself becomes meditation because your mind body soul is all integrated during that uh, particular time and as i said the last one uh, last motivation is moksha which is to free yourself liberate yourself from uh, the cycle of birth and rebirth so the only way to do that is try to renounce from all the um, fruits of your labor and uh, the lesser you expect the more you are happy because as i keep saying if you have to climb the mount everest or you have a, you have to climb the uh, mountain you have to uh, keep your baggage very light the more you try to make it heavier the more it will get uh, uh, difficult for you to climb up so it's the same thing in life if we have to rise above we need to keep our baggage light and we have to shed off all the uh, unnecessary desires and expectations and wants that we keep on piling up and keep troubling ourselves again because when it's not fulfilled it give, gives negative feedback negative reinforcement to the mind and uh, that's how we are feeding our mind on a regular basis that we are not keeping track of we are not being aware of so we need to uh, become more sensitive and aware of how we are thinking how we are generating our thoughts and how it is impacting our energy and uh, how it creates the blockages and uh, what it will take for us to free ourselves ultimately so the answers in